Hi, Graham Roberts here. Well, when you've got three radio buttons on a form and they're mutually exclusive, and if you haven't seen how to do that yet, have a look at that video. How do you use them? Well, there are many ways. I'm just going to show you one way. I'm going to put a text field onto the form. A text field, as we've said in an earlier tutorial, is really for input. I'm going to use it for output. We could use a label for that, um, but I'm going to use a, 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 a text box or a text field because we've already seen one of those. Okay, so we put it on there and we just leave the default text in there for the moment. Basically, radio buttons are meant to be clicked and so that's what we're going to utilize. First of all, though, we are going to um, change the labels on these radio buttons. If I right click on here it will say I can edit the text and I'm going to make this text a color blue and then I'm going to change this text and make it a color green and then I'm going to change this one and make it the color red. Okay. The names of these are still the same. J radio button 1, 2 and 3 there. And that's important because remember we've grouped them and we've actually added them with those names, the default names. So what we're going to do next is make it so that when these radio buttons are clicked, the label associated with them is shown in this box. Again, there are several ways to do this. The way I'm going to do it, hopefully, is the most simple. First of all, I'm going to create a handler by double-clicking on the radio button, like so. And there is the handler created for me by NetBeans, and not only a handler, but also a listener. How do I capture the trigger, that is, the click? Well, what I need to do is, in here, we want to um, say that the J text field one, which is the name of it, text is set. So we use the sex te set text method. What we want to set it to is blue, because that's the label for this particular radio button. I'm going to just copy that because I'm going to paste it again later. If we go to design again and do the same thing for the green button, if I may call it that, and just control V here and write in green, and I bet you can ex uh, tell me what I'm going to do for the next one. Yeah, it's going to be a red. You're probably thinking, is it really that simple? Well, have a look. We're running it now, so it will compile it and then run it. There we have it, and I click blue. We see blue, click green, green, and red, red. So, yes, it really is that simple once you've set them up to collect the information from them. Now you may be thinking, aha, but what if we change the colour? So it wasn't blue, green, red. And we change the colour here from blue to yellow. Isn't it going to now report the wrong colour? If we run it again and click yellow, oh, it says blue, quite right too. Well, how could we make it so that the label value is picked up automatically. Well, it's actually not a label value so much as a text value of the label. So we need to just get the text of the label. And this is how you do that. We go back into the source and remember we had JTEX field one dot set text blue. Well what we actually want to set into that text is the text for that particular radio button label. 
Well, we know the name of the radio button because it's right in front of us here. And so we can just copy and paste that. And there is a getter or a get text for that, and that's here. That's all we do. It just gets the text from there. However, we want to put that text into the field that's on the screen for the text. So the text field. So we want to put it into here. So all we need to do is cut that and pop it into here. We could have just typed it in there in the first place, of course. This is a tutorial, so I'm just showing you how I'm thinking um, as I go along. But you can just do things straight away. Okay, so there we have it. And that will work in exactly the same way. And the good thing about that is it's what we call generic. We can just copy and paste that into the handlers for however many radio buttons we happen to have. So we can just add another radio button and there's no problem at all, as I shall show you. If I go back into design, I'm just going to add another radio button um, here. I'm going to put one up here and I'm going to edit the text on it. And I'm going to put in the color magenta and click on the handler there we have the handler and do just going to do a control V for the text we already had before and now I'm going to run my program and if I'm right what we should see is that the appropriate colors are shown now you probably spotted that, that didn't work the reason for it not working is because I've used copy and paste I've not actually remembered to change the radio button name so if we just go into here into the code and do that we can just change that we want that for button one but this is button two look button two here we are button two so we put that in there this is a common mistake people make but it's easily rectified so don't panic when this sort of thing happens, when you use copy and pasting, it's very simple to rectify. And now, if we run this yellow, green, red, magenta. So, that's how you can use radio buttons in your projects.